Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. As usual, it's me, Ivan. And in today's video, I'll be showing you another really nice watch. This is the Phoebus Wavemaster, which now comes in a more compact case of 39.5mm. And I'm telling you straight away, it's absolutely brilliant. In addition, this model houses a Miura 9039. And if you hurry up, you'll be able to grab yourself one of these for just $340. Before we start looking at the watch itself, I really want to put some emphasis on the price. This model retails for 425 US dollars, but if you use the early bird coupon WM20, you get 20% off, which in this particular case, it will bring the price down to 340 US dollars. And all things considered, I think this is an excellent deal. Now, I love this purple dial, but if it's not your cup of tea, there are four additional configurations for you to choose from. And a huge shout out to Phoebus for letting us choose between a date or a no date version. That's something that I definitely appreciate very much. No matter which dial variant you go for, you will receive your watch in this rectangular letter case, and the quality of it is rather nice. As always, we're going to proceed with the dimensions now. If you have followed Phoebus over the years, then you probably know that originally the Wavemaster model was released in 42mm. Then about a year ago they released the Wavemaster GMT, which came in 39.5mm, and now we have this upgraded Wavemaster, which features the same case as those GMT models. So the case diameter here is also 39.5mm, the lug to lug is 46 However, due to the Miyota movement, this one is a bit thinner and it comes at 11.6mm, while the GMT model is 127 7 Then we've got the lug width, which is 20mm. On my 17cm or 6.7 inch wrist, this Phoebus looks fantastic in my opinion. It has a lot of wrist presence and the purple dial is really nice. It also wears extremely comfortable. It's very well balanced, and it feels very solid as well. Speaking of feeling solid, sized for me, it weighs 158 grams. But once again, thanks to the engineer style bracelet and excellent weight distribution, this watch feels very comfortable on the wrist. For you to get a slightly better idea about the size, here is a quick comparison with my Alpinist Sarp 017. Both watches are incredibly close in terms of dimensions, with the only major difference being the thickness. The Phoebus is just a bit thinner. On the wrist, both wear about the same. Moving on guys, I would like us to talk about the design and the build quality. Overall, I consider the design to be an original one, although the case seems to be inspired by the Tudor Black Bay, as the shape is similar. Both watches lack crown guards, and they both have chamfered edges that run across the flanks. You see, the Tudor Black Bay has been my favorite watch ever since I bought it, so needless to say, I really like the design of this new Wave Master. When it comes to the build quality, this Phoebus feels like a proper 2 watch. It's made of 316L steel, it has a very thick flat sapphire crystal, the bezel insert is ceramic, and just like most dive watches, it is 200 meters water resistant, thanks to the sign screwing crown, and deeply embossed case back. Guys, the finishing is also pretty good. The whole watch is vertically brushed, except for those chamfered lines on the flanks that I've already mentioned. The bracelet is great, it's just as well made as the case. All the links are solid, and they're joined together with screws. As I said earlier, it is the main reason why this Phoebus sits so nicely on the wrist. It has great articulation, and it balances out the watch so that it doesn't feel top heavy. In addition, it features an on the fly adjustable clasp, which is milled, and it gives you about 8mm of fine tuning. However, if one day you feel like replacing it with a purple rubber band that matches the dial, 
You can very easily do so by using the quick release spring bars. Next, let's have a word about this beautiful gradient dial. You know what, for me, this is the first time I review a purple dial watch, and I must say, I really like it. In the center, it's quite vivid, and then it gradually becomes muted until it reaches the chapter ring, which is black with orange markings. And of course, there is the engraved wave pattern, which appears more or less pronounced, depending on the light conditions and on the angle that you look at it. Then we've got the light hour markers and the handset, which are high polished. Something else that I want to point out here is that, due to the Miyota 9039, the handset sits really close to the dial. I'm not sure if you can appreciate it on camera, but in person, it's something that I find very interesting to see. And here's what the dial looks like in the dark. If you are familiar with Phoebus watches, then you know that the magic formula here consists of 15 layers of Superluminova. In this case, we've got Superluminova dark blue for the hour markers and the handset, while the bezel insert has been treated with BGW9. And as you can see, everything looks nice and bright, and it stays like this for a very long time. Before I tell you about the movement, I just want to show you the bezel action, because I totally forgot about it. What we've got here is a coin edge bezel, which is quite thin, but it's surprisingly grippy, and so it's very easy to turn. The number of clicks is 120. The amount of backplay is minimal. And it lines up perfectly. Alright guys, as I've already mentioned a couple of times throughout the video, this Phoebus houses the Miyota 9039 caliber, while the date version comes with the 9015 instead. The only difference between the two is obviously the date complication, and also the height of the hand stack that I told you about a moment ago. Besides that, both share the same specs, which you can see on the screen right now. I've already owned a few watches with Miyota 9000 series calibers, and they've all been fantastic. Compared to the Seiko NH34, I would say this caliber is better, in the sense that it's a 4Hz movement, which means that the sweeping of the second hand is a bit smoother. In addition, I also find the 9039 and the 9015 to be a bit more consistent when it comes to daily accuracy. Speaking of which, fully wound dial up. This one is running 9 seconds fast per day, and the bead error is only 0.8 milliseconds, which is a very solid performance. So, there you have it, everyone. I'm very much impressed with this new Phoebus Wavemaster, and there is absolutely nothing I wish Phoebus had done differently. Honestly, this watch is right up my alley. I mean, the build quality is solid, it comes with a nice colorful dial. And as a bracelet guy, I'm extremely happy with this engineer-style bracelet. But hey, you know how this goes. I'm just giving you my opinion, and now I would love to see yours in the comments below. Thank you for watching, guys. Subscribe if you haven't already. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.